Hi, Lars Christensen here, part of Autodesk Marketing Team. Let's do a quick Inventor tip. Let's talk about this AnyCAD technology. Inventor 2016 just got released, and some of you might not have had a chance to get your hands on it yet, but I know that many of you are going to dig this tool, so I just have to show you how it works. What it does is it associates all the 3D applications right inside Inventor without even translating them. It's like Inventor is looking directly at a foreign file, look who's talking, and um, then if this other file is changing, it will just update right inside Inventor. Let's take a look at it here. So here we have Autodesk Inventor 2016. And in this example, I'm going to use a SolidWorks assembly file of uh, the brake pedal for the BAC Mono uh, race car. So inside of Inventor, I am going to go up and say new, and I'm just going to select a um, metric assembly document to bring this file into. And what is new in, um, in Vendor 2016 is we have this place imported CAD files. So I'm going to click on that. And now I just need to browse to this SolidWorks assembly file for this pedal assembly. And this new dialog will open up. And the first option you have is convert model. So that is the, the standard way. And that's one of the great things about Inventor is Inventor is, is absolutely awesome at bringing in uh, imported geometry. But the new function is this reference model. And you will see beneath, you can filter down what you want to bring in. So like surfaces or solid bodies. But what is really cool is if you go over to the select tab, and you click load model, then you will see that we actually now have a complete view into that SOLIDWORKS assembly. So let me just spin it around here so we can take a good look at it. So really powerful that we haven't imported any geometry, but we are looking directly at that SOLIDWORKS model. Now we have this option to include or exclude objects from this file. So if I go up here and I click on the top of the feature tree and I hit exclude objects, then you will actually see that everything in the feature tree here gets deselected and I get this cool ghost image. And I can actually use the view cube to, um, to kind of like dial in on this. And then you can just drag a window for selecting the items that you want to uh, reference inside of your inventor file. So I can zoom in here and I can also hold down control and select other items. So, you know, you have that full option in here and then you can include or, or uh, exclude whatever you want. So I'm going to just include those items that are just windowed and that extra base plate and hit OK. And then I can just go in and place it inside of inventor, just like if it was any other uh, component that I imported in. Now, this is not an imported geometry again. This is just viewing directly out on that uh, model. And I can actually go right back in and, and edit this. So you will see that I have a flathead screw that I, by mistake, got windowed. I can just right click and select Edit Import. And then I can just go right back in where we were before. And I can now find that item. Um, by selecting it in the graphics area and it will automatically be highlighted and I can now exclude it out of there and hit OK. So now we have this reference geometry right inside of Inventor. So again, we haven't translated anything inside of Inventor, but we are from Inventor looking right out of that SOLIDWORKS model. So it's pretty cool so far, but it gets better, right? Because now the cool thing is that if there is a design change to that SOLIDWORKS file, well, Guess what? It will update inside Inventor. So let me show you that. So again, let's jump out to, to the file here, the assembly. And I'm going to go into this base plate of this um, SOLIDWORKS file. And we could imagine that we have a little bit bigger guy getting into our, inside of our car. So we're just going to shift the brake pedal uh, side over a little bit. So I'm just going to go in and make a parametric change. So the base plate uh, got a little longer. And when we update the assembly, we will see that the brake uh, assembly moved over a little bit. Now here's the cool thing. When we save this assembly inside of SOLIDWORKS, you will now see that inside of Inventor immediately there will be a flag that shows us that there's a change to this model. 
So now what we just have to do inside of here is click and update and you will see that everything switches right inside of Inventor because again, we're just looking at that SOLIDWORKS model. So Inventor is just keeping a straight link to that. So let me go back and change that back again, just so you can see it again. So I'm gonna go into the base plate and I'm gonna switch it back again. I'm gonna make it 50 millimeters shorter. And when I update the assembly, you will see that now the brake pedal move over. So now it's narrow again. I save the assembly and right inside of Inventor up there is the icon that gives us that there's a change. As soon as we click that, the Inventor model switches over. So I think this is really, really huge. I mean, for people who is dealing with this whole um, referencing models or always getting changes, I mean, then this is this this is gold. So just want to make sure you know that in 2016 Inventor, you have this AnyCAD technology that can just look out at other foreign data and uh, and keep an eye on it and see what it does. So hey. I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, quick tip and um, until next time, have an awesome day.